So, first things first. This game is one of the biggest disappointments I have had in recent years. So grab a drink, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for why I couldn't even be bothered to finish playing Middle Earth Shadow of War. The Gold Edition. Yeah, I paid $120 for this. Spoiler alert, buy the Standard Edition. You're not missing anything. Part 1, Story. To really get why I despise the way that Monolith have treated Shadow of War's story, we need to compare this to the first game, Shadow of Mordor. Now right off the bat, I loved Shadow of Mordor. It was a bloody good game. It was fun. It started very strong, and although it did wane a little towards the end, you were always striving for something. That something being the vengeance for the murder of your family. Solid concept, early build, and everything you do in-game leads towards that end goal of revenge. Now looking at Shadow of War. You've just created a new ring of power. Okay, cool. I can get behind this. The last time a ring of power was made, Sauron caused some serious mischief. I'm keen for that. We gamers love causing mischief. Oops, okay, no. She loves apparently a woman now, and she has the ring. Okay. Now we're defending this city called Minas Ithil. I've never heard of it, but okay. We saved this obnoxious lazy plot device. Okay. Now the city's fallen. Okay. So Shelob gave back the ring because we saved her. Okay. Why? Now, inherently, what Monolith has done here with the story isn't a bad thing. The story of Minas Ithil on its own would have been awesome, and I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't enjoy myself at some parts. The last bastion of mankind within Mordor is a concept that I can totally get behind. What I can't get behind, however, is what Monolith have done with the story. How stupid it is, how predictable it is, and how lazy it is. And it only seems to be shoehorned in here because the writers couldn't think of anything better to do. I know. Instead of turning this into Shelob's bitch for an entire act, why not start with us crafting the ring? Or better yet, gathering the materials to craft the ring. That would have been infinitely more interesting in investing for the player. But no, you are forced to endure upwards to four hours of running to get a vision from Shelob, then running back to Minas Field to do some inane crap, play on loop for four hours and there's your first act. It is so fucking lazy that even now thinking about it makes me angry. And even worse is how seriously the story takes itself. There's a big section of the first act that is very heavily focused on discovering a traitor within Minas Ithil, and how everything will be absolutely fucked if they don't find him. Now let's play a game here. Welcome to Guess the Villain, brought to you by the Lazy Writers Committee. Today on this episode, we have to discern who among these characters is a dastardly villainous traitor. Is it A, any of these characters who haven't done slash said anything slightly traitorous in all the time we've known them? Or B, the general slash leader of the city who was heard saying to his daughter, We must protect. At all costs. I'll give you a minute to think that one over. It's a super tough nut to crack. I am so tired of lazy writing in video games. Games as a media are one of the best ways to tell a story. There is no other type of entertainment with the level of depth and possible connection with its audience than video games. You are literally a part of it. So for fuck's sake, stop telling me that I have to care about these people. Stop telling me that this will be bad if I don't do it. You can literally make me do it or show me. It happens too often and it's just not good enough. There are examples out there of amazing storytelling in games. From The Last of Us to the Telltale Walking Dead games to something as simple as Cuphead, which was made by three people. The creative director Michael DePlato was even quoted saying, this was our ambition to do the big blockbuster version of the ideas we'd begun to explore in the first game. I'm here to tell you, Michael, in terms of story writing, you fucked it up. A good example of this is in the Act 1 missions about the Palantir. You spend the entire first act looking for this super powerful, super dangerous artifact. You need it because you're told that without the new ring, it's the only way to fight Sauron. But then some very predictable events occur and the Witch King gets his hands on it. Okay, so in the universe I inhabit as a character, this is an extremely bad thing. It has been spoon-fed to me that the Palantir falling into the wrong hands can't be allowed to happen. Okay, I don't care. In the movies, Saruman had the Palantir, and he just went cross-eyed for a bit and perved on people. It's just more tell and don't show. And as I said earlier, I really, really hate being told what to care about. Adding on to that, that those missions are actually optional, and my care factor drops to absolute zero. Why make such a huge deal about something if it doesn't even matter? I skip straight onto the third act without even bothering to touch them, and it really sucks. When a story set in the Lord of the Rings universe, one of the richest and most varied universes I have ever come across can't invest me there's a big problem now a lot of people are gonna say but you need to know the backstory to fully appreciate the world and the universe i play video games to get away from doing homework that falls to the responsibility of the storytellers and i think that the writers of this game have failed tremendously part two gameplay 
I bought the gold edition for this, the 120 Australian dollar gold edition. So for those of you who don't know which one to buy, the gold edition included two extra storylines that to be honest aren't worth getting to, two extra orc tribes that you wouldn't notice if they were gone from the game, and a loot chest that gave me a sword I used for 20 minutes until a random drop gave me a better one. Do I feel cheated out of my money? A little bit. Do I regret spending the money on this? Well no, because it means that I get to play this crap version of a game so that you don't have to waste your hard earned money. If you are set on buying this, buy the standard edition. Down to actual gameplay, if you've played Shadow of Mordor, you know exactly what kind of game you're getting. The combat controls are very well done, if a little simplified, and the combat itself is a blast. There's something satisfying about being in a 1v20 battle and absolutely tearing up. It's good fun! The movement controls are clunky and I wish they would have just polished them a little bit more before they released them, but it's nothing game breaking. Speaking of game breaking, however, the AI in this game is absolutely fucking retarded. Playing this game is so easy. Even on the hardest difficulty, the AI isn't smarter, they just do more damage. They're so fucking stupid that you can successfully stealth kill them from directly in front of them. Or better yet, just send one of your boys to do it for you. Nothing says fun gameplay like subcontracting. This is not, in any definition of the term, a hard game. There is no challenge here. I think that may be another contributing factor as to why I didn't have as much fun as I wanted. Orcs are supposed to be the scourge of humanity. Extremely dangerous, extremely violent and vicious and devious. But all you get in this game is slow, dim-witted cockney chavs. Fighting the captains is fun for the first few times until you get the freeze punch ability and then it's an absolute breeze. Probably the biggest aspect of gameplay that let me down is the fortress battles. What was really disappointing in this is how everything was so hyped up. Everything was being staged perfectly for this massive blockbuster spectacle, and it just does not deliver what was promised. Kind of like McGregor vs Mayweather. The idea is amazing, and the hype train isn't stopping at any stations, but finally when it arrives, all you get is two sweaty dudes slapping at each other like fairies. It's just not worth it. Now this isn't to say that I hated every aspect of it. There were some really cool moments and mechanics in here that I thought were really good. For instance, I really, really appreciate that my army was actually doing stuff. Here I was, caught up in the middle of a personal fight with two orc captains who had griefed me before, and I look up and I see that my captains have not only captured the first gatehouse in our assault, but they had also cleared the way to the second. That's bloody awesome! It's not often in a game where the mantle of being the only hero is taken away from you, and it's definitely something I would like to see more of in other games. What I don't appreciate, however, is how long it took me to get to that point. Going through the hassle of hunting down these captains, fighting them, them, grinding down their level to something that's lower than mine, then dominating all the ones you want because, let's be honest, you don't want retard McFuckface here in your army, then being told that the army you just gathered, all your boys that you spent so many hours dominating, training and grooming to be the best that they can be, don't come with you when you move to a new location! Sure, game! I will sit and I will grind as much as you want to see what happens once. Maybe even twice if I can be bothered to do it, but I will be damned! if you're gonna make me sit through that shit every single time I have to take over a fortress. It is just not worth it. Back to the positive side is the Nemesis system. It is by far the best part of the game. Cultivating alliances and rivalries is super enjoyable. It feels exactly like what was in Shadow of Mordor, but better. It adds a whole new level of depth and experience to the game. A great example is just one moment where I was hunting down a captain I wanted to join my army, and the bastard counter-ambushed my ambush. I didn't know that could happen. It was great. It absolutely floored me that this was even a possibility. I just wish that the devs put as much care and polish into the rest of the game as they did the Nemesis system. Part 3, Graphics and Sound. This game has some very decent looking graphics at the highest settings. Take it down to medium or low and you start getting funny shit like this happening. The character models are fairly detailed and there's quite a bit of variety in the look of each orc and captain, but most of them are very forgettable. The real beauty here is in the environments, especially of Midas Ithil. This part of the game was very well done and it was something I enjoyed looking at. With the music however, I honestly would not be able to tell you anything. I have about 12 hours of playtime on this game and for the life of me, I can't remember any of the music from it. Seems like just one other element that didn't get enough attention. Conclusion. Playing this game was such a personal disappointment for me. Made even more so because I absolutely adored the first one, and I love the Lord of the Rings universe. Now, you may be thinking I'm being overly critical of this game because I'm a soulless prick who can't have fun, but I like to think that there are standards of quality that developers need to be held to, and the quality of this game just falls way too short of them for me. If you're on the fence about buying this game, don't buy it. 
But if you want to buy it, save yourself some cash and just get the standard edition. Thanks for watching.